Hi friends. So sorry I'm late in getting this book to you. It's one of my favorite books, Anne Tall, Molly Lou Mellon. It's written by Patti LaBelle and illustrate, illustrated by David Cottrell. Molly Lou Mellon stood just taller than her dog and was the shortest girl in the first grade. She didn't mind. Her grandma had told her, walk as proudly as you can and the world will look up to you. So she did. Molly Lou Mellon had buck teeth that stuck out so far. She could stack pennies on them. She didn't mind. Her grandma told her, smile big and the world will smile right alongside you. So she did. Molly Lou Mellon had a voice that sounded like a bullfrog being squeezed by a boa constrictor. She didn't mind. Her grandma had told her, sing out clear and, clear and strong and the world will cry tears of joy. So she did. Molly Lou Mellon was often fumble-fingered. That means she was a bit clumsy. She didn't mind. Her grandma had told her, believe in yourself and the world will believe in you too. So she did. Look at her, she's juggling those, all those dishes. Then Molly Lou Mellon moved to a new town. She had to say goodbye to her grandma and all of her friends. Oh no, look at her. She's saying bye to her friends. And start in a new school. On the first day of school, Ronald Durkin called her shrimp -o in gym class. When the game started, Molly Lou Mellon caught the football, ran under the legs of Ronald Durkin, and scored a touchdown. All the children thought, wow, she's good. And Ronald Durkin felt very foolish. <laughs> On the second day of school, Ronald Durkin called to her, called her Bucky Tooth Beaver. Molly Lou Mellon took out her panties, stacked tin high on her teeth, and smiled as big as day. <clears throat> All the children smiled with glee, and Ronald Durkin felt very foolish. Look how talented she is. On the third day of school, Ronald Durkin said, You sound like a sick duck. Ha ha. Molly Lou Mellon sang out a quack so clear and strong that it made Ronald Durkin somersault backwards, hit his head, and have to go to the nurse. <coughs> All the children cried with joy to, the, to be free of Ronald Durkin for the rest of the afternoon, and Ronald Durkin felt very foolish. On the fourth day of school, Ronald Durkin said that she made the, made the snowflake all wrong. But Molly Lou Mellon opened up her paper and revealed the most beautiful snowflake of all. All the children oohed and awed, even Ronald. Oh, look at that snowflake.
On the fifth day of school, Arnold Durkin brought Molly Lou Mellon a stacking penny for a tooth and smiled at her. Oh, look, they're friends now. That night, Molly Lou Mellon took out a pencil and paper and wrote a letter to her grandma. Dear Grandma, I want to tell you that everything you told me was exactly right. Love, Molly Lou Mellon. Here's the grandma reading the letter. If you liked it, one thumb up. If you didn't like it, one thumb down. And we're going to do an activity with this book here in a second. to make our own snowflake and there's no wrong way to make a snowflake so I'm using coffee filters but you can use paper uh, it's whatever you have at home so I'm just first gonna fold it you can fold it however many times you want to but I just like to fold it as many times as I can and then the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna cut out oh, first Ask your parents before using scissors. Uh, make sure you have an adult help you with scissors. Um, and then you're going to cut off the end, the middle here. And then on the edges here, you're just going to cut out little triangles. Do the same on the other side. You can see where I made the triangles. And now, it's your stuff And we're gonna try a different design on this one. So I'm just gonna fold it in half and then fold it in half again. I'm gonna cut out the middle. And on this one, I'm gonna try and do half loads. And then here's our other snowflake. So you can decorate your house with these. Remember to it's snowing. Have a good day.